Hello everyone, welcome back to Reverse Engineering Linux 32-Bit Applications. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about IDA Pro. Now we've talked about IDA Pro before, and we said this is pretty much the gold standard in debuggers for reverse engineers, and why do we like it? It supports many platforms. It does have some advanced analysis tools that none of the other options have. And it has a very large support community. There's a lot of people who are using this tool. If you go online, you will find lots of information about it, tutorials about how to use it. You will also find that there are books on how to use IDA Pro. Some of the minuses of this tool, the free version has less platforms that it supports, but to be fair, a lot of the free alternatives don't support additional platforms either. So it's not entirely fair to say, hey, it doesn't support all the platforms that the paid tool does when we don't have free tools that support all those platforms as well. And of course, if you have the free version, it doesn't come with any support. But again, there is a nice community of users out there that you might be able to talk to. So let's go ahead and have a look at this tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it. And it comes up and it says non-commercial use and all of that. And it says, would you like to disassemble a new file? Go to a previous file. I'm going to go to a new file. So as we've done before, I want to load a debugger in the debugger. So I will load up EDB, Evans Debugger, inside of IDA, just to show you the features that it has. And it says, hey, this looks like a 64-bit ELF file, that's a Linux executable file. What kind of analysis should I do? And I'll just go with the defaults. So I realize this is a 32-bit course, not a 64-bit course, but I just want to show you the features today. So now it will take a little bit of time because it does some pretty serious analysis here. All right. So looking at what's been loaded, you'll notice that it doesn't look an awful lot like Evans Debugger or GDB for that matter. Of course, GDB is a command line app. And it's still doing a little bit of analysis. And now it has generated a couple of different views. And we'll, we'll go through those very briefly. We'll get more detailed later in this course. All right, so I want to start by just going through the different options for this tool. So. On the file menu, we can load a new executable. Now, one thing that's kind of cool with IDA Pro is that it will generate a database for everything that it analyzes. I can actually take those files and send them to somebody else, and they can analyze the program without ever having to have an executable. You say, why would you want to do that? A good example, let's say I have some malware. I'm trying to analyze it. I want to send it to a friend. Well, I don't want to send them malware, but I can safely send them the IDA Pro files. So we have some script files that we can load and run. 
So there is some scripting capability in this tool as well. Under edit, you know, have the ability to edit different parts of my program. You know, I can select things, convert it to an instruction, different kinds of data, including structures and strings. I can tell it what sort of strings I'm using, the most standard or common being a C style string that's null terminated, but there are some other options as well. I can look at different operand types. I can enter comments into the code. I can look at different segments. I can create my own structures, a lot of other things that are available. Jump, this is pretty much useful if I want to actually run this. I mean, it is a debugger after all. I can search, I can search for all kinds of things. I can search for text. I can search for references to a memory location. There are just tons and tons of things that I can search for here. Under views, I have all of my standard views, but I even have some sub views. For example, I will go to my sub view of disassembly. And this will show me the disassembled version of my program. I can also look at functions that have been called, but we'll see that that's already being displayed and some other things as well. Under graphs, I can generate things like a flowchart. Now, it doesn't have that option enabled for one thing because it's already generated a flowchart. And we'll look at that a bit later. I can say what toolbars I want. I even have a calculator, so I don't have to leave this program. I can look at recent scripts that have been run and various other options. Under options, I have a ton of options that I can set. You know, maybe I want to change this font since I'm doing this for a video. I want to up the font size a little bit. I can give it different compiler options, assembly options. Very, very configurable tool. I can decide which windows I want to display and I can get help. So if I go to help, it will display some help on the tool. I can also get information about it. I'll notice it says it's freeware, non-commercial use, no technical support, only supports 64-bit code. All right, so down here, I see that I have a toolbar and that allows me to load a new file, save what I've got. I can go to previously saved positions. I can search for a value. I can search for text, just a string of bytes. I can flip flop my search direction. I can also open up my problems window. This is just giving me status, telling me it's ready to run. 
I can select something, convert it to an instruction or to data or to a structure variable or a string or an array. So I have a lot of different items there. I can rename a location to something that's a little bit more intuitive. And I can start a new debugging process, run this through the debugger, select the different breakpoints. So I can open that in another window. So there's a lot of things that I can do right here. Now, some of you may have noticed there's this bar here and you're like thinking, what's that all about? That is a memory map for my program. And you'll notice that I'm over here. I'm here at the start of the program. And if I look at my different views, it's not terribly exciting. Basically, I'm defining a whole bunch of variables. Then when I get to this shade of blue, that is my regular functions. That's kind of the meat of my program, if you will. So if I click in this region, it will move me there. We have instructions, data, again, a whole bunch of data at the start. That's the way a typical ELF file will look unexplored and external symbols. All right, so looking at the main windows that automatically come up here, I have an output window that tells me what's happening with Ida. I have the ability to enter some commands. I have a function window. So what are the functions in this program? Now notice that many of these have names that are not the most intuitive. So here I have init proc, but I also have things like sub 46C380. And all this is is a function, but it doesn't know what it's called. It, this is not a program that was built with debugging enabled. So it's just some function at this address. So I can come in here and I can edit that function and I can give it a different name. You know, if I figure out what it's all about, and that can help me figure out what's going on with this program. So those are my functions. And you'll notice there are quite a few that do have standard names because I'm calling out to library functions. Yeah, this is Evans debugger. So it's going to call a bunch of QT functions because it's written with that windowing system. And I'm probably not terribly interested in those. So let me walk you through this main pane, if you will. This main pane is the Ida view A. So this is a view of your program, it's been disassembled, but it gives you this nice chart view of your program to see what's going to happen. Now, if I want to look at essentially the raw disassembly, that's Ida view B. That's something that doesn't normally show up but it only showed up because I went to view, subviews, and then I said disassembly. Now notice now 
I can do a flow chart and it will show me how this program is going to flow. It's, it's a little bit boring for this part here. We'll get more into those things later in this course. I have hex views. This is just a raw hex dump of a memory area. I can look at any structures that have been defined in this program. Enumerations. Imports. So I'm going to have a ton of these. Looks like I have over a thousand, 1,265 into this program. So this can give you a lot of insight into what this program is about. You know, I see a bunch of QT libraries being used, but, you know, I might look and see, oh, there's a bunch of networking stuff. So this is what this program is about. And again, it somewhat depends on what kind of reverse engineering you're trying to do. You know, are you trying to try to figure out what it does so that you can analyze something that's possibly malicious or are you trying to find vulnerabilities? So looking at the imports can also help you find those vulnerable apps. If I look at exports, these are things that this program makes available to others. You might say, well, why would it do that? It's possible that this program has a scripting engine, and it's also possible that it is just exporting things to itself, if you will. So you can have program-specific DLLs and such, and they will export items to be used elsewhere in that program. So that is a pretty high level view. You know, I, again, not going to get into all the features in this video. I mean, it would be a very, very long video if we did. But I did want to go through some of the different features of Ida Pro and help you make that decision. You know, do you want to go with something like this? Or do you think you want to use something like Evans debugger or, you know, go hardcore and use GDB for your disassembly of Linux 32-bit apps. Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video. As a reminder, you know, this is one of a family of videos in reverse engineering and other topics here at Pentester Academy. I look forward to getting into the actual meat of this course very soon, and I will see you then.